Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Leah and today is Get Ready With Murder Tuesday. I'm gonna just do a get ready with me but I'm gonna talk about a true crime case, one that I found very interesting because I knew nothing about outside of what Hollywood told me. So if you wanna know more about the case of Pamela Smart and see what I did for this makeup look today, make sure to stay tuned. Today we are gonna talk about the case of Pamela Smart. Um, my friend was the one who recommended this to me and um, <laughs> I didn't actually know who she was talking about because what I first said was, oh, is that Elizabeth Smart's mom? No. Some of you may have seen the film To Die For starring Nicole Kidman and Joaquin Phoenix and other 90s stars of the silver screen. Um, and that's the case that movie was based on this case however in a bit of true hollywood form i don't think they really stuck to the details or maybe even did a whole lot of research about it um so we're going to talk about the actual uh i just have lash glue from yesterday <laughs> um the actual details of the case and then we'll talk about the stories of the both both sides really Pamela Smart was born in 1967, and she met her husband Gregory, but we'll call him Greg, I think that's how you just went. Fart noise. Um, in, when she was about 20. What am I doing with my finger? I'm so distracted. Um, they got married when they were pretty young. They were actually 22? Yeah, they were 22 when they got married. So to me, that's really young. I didn't get married till I was 35 almost. Um, so to me, that's pretty young. <clears throat> but it was the 80s, so it was like the height of hair bands and metal, like hair metal music. And I need to get a new tube of this. So she and her husband, Greg, met and fell in love over their shared love of hair band, or I want to say hair metal, but to them it was just heavy metal. So super into Van Halen and Motley Crue, and she had beautiful, huge 80s, 90s hair. It was huge and permed and teased to the gods, so it was wonderful. Um, so they got married when they were 22. Um, at this point, Greg decided that you know we're getting married i should probably be a little bit more of a grown-up we need to grow up a little so he you know cut off his beautiful rocker hair and got a job with his dad's real estate firm real estate firm let me check okay by real estate i meant insurance <laughs> so he got a job with his dad's insurance firm and pam got a job at a local high school in a project or a program called project self-esteem um it was in the height of you know dare and track me over here please um you know keep kids off drugs the war on drugs so she got a job at this high school as her job was a media coordinator but she really was a part of this program um while she was working and leading this program she met william billy flynn um at this point she was about 23 and he was 15 16 so um I think one of the things that gets said a lot was that she was his teacher and while technically she wasn't a teacher she just worked at the school and that's something people say a lot like in her defense was like she wasn't a teacher she was just a blah 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 but still she was an authority figure at the school um you know lines should not have been crossed and the lines I mean is the affair that they started having um so she and this young boy a young boy <laughs> this teenage boy um you know also kind of bonded over their love of rock and roll and heavy metal he had like awesome hair and he was super into motley crew and they just love to talk about van halen and not doing drugs so <laughs> this apparently made her kind of fall in love with him because greg you know was kind of following the straight and narrow she i think saw a lot of what her relationship maybe used to be when she started you know having this affair with um Billy. And this actually, to put a little bit of a timeline on it, I said she was 23. That means that she hadn't even been married to Greg for a full year. Um, when, you know, their marriage started having troubles, I guess. She had kept saying it was on the rocks. Um, and that was part of the reason that like led to the affair with Billy. It hadn't even been a year that they were married, but on their first wedding anniversary, Pamela came home from a work meeting 
um, in the evening, so this was 1990, and she found her home to be very disheveled, like it had been robbed, and that Greg had been shot um, execution style and was dead. So the police investigated and, you know, as they do, first they investigated it as a robbery murder, and then they, um, And then they had somebody come forward with a 38 caliber pistol that he believed was probably the murder weapon. Um, he happened to be the father of one of the four boys that later would be um, charged with killing Greg. So with that murder weapon in hand and an anonymous tip about another um, girl. So there was four boys. It's Billy, who was having an affair with um, Pamela and then he had three friends. I'm gonna read their names because I can't remember them off the top of my head um, So we've got Pete Randall Vance J.R. Latimer Jr. and Raymond Fowler. It was J.R.'s dad who found the gun in his home and turned it into police and then police also got a tip about a girl named Cecilia It was an anonymous tip um, That she had knowledge of the crime as well. So police talked to Cecilia got her to wear a wire and got some very incriminating conversations between her and Pamela that led them to um, arrest Pam. Pamela was arrested on first degree mur murder, murder, and if she was found guilty, she faced um, life in prison without parole. Um, the four boys also were arrested, but they took a plea deal. Um, their deal would be that their sentence would be cut in half if they um, basically pled guilty and testified against Pamela. And that's exactly what they did. So the story that was told in court was that Pamela was this um, genius mastermind who seduced this boy and um, convinced him to kill her husband. and that she was uh sorry definitely an accomplice because she you know planned with the boys and then also left their basement door open so that they could get in on that night and you know stage the robbery slash murder of her husband so with that information and um the boys testimony pamela of course was found guilty of first degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without chance for parole. And she's actually still in prison to this day. The boys, you know, were also, they did, you know, plead guilty and were sentenced. So they're all out of prison now. I believe the final or the last um, one of those boys, I think it was Billy, was just released this last year. So they've all, you know, served their time, gone on and lived their lives trying to forget it um, and Pam's still in prison so those are the <laughs> those are the facts folks now the stories the story that put Pam in prison was basically Billy's story he said you know I am a young impressionable um, 16 year old or 15 year old I guess at the time boy who was seduced by this teacher um, who's you know young and attractive and she basically worked her magic on me, got me to fall in love with her. Um, he was the first person that he'd had sexual contact with. So um, they used that a lot that, you know, she took his virginity and, you know, made him use that as a manipulation tactic. And that her manipulation was that she wouldn't have sex with him anymore until, you know, he killed her husband. And, you know, he said, of course, I was in love with her and she was a really good manipulator. Um, so he said, I was in love with her and she was a, like a master manipulator. And she really, you know, got in my head and then got in the head of the boys or the other boys. And um, I felt that there was nothing else to do except, you know, stage this robbery that she planned and go ahead with it because she said it was going to be OK that, you um, we would be together and we would be happy. Okay, tea time. Do you see the color this is on my lid? And do you see the color this is in the pan? I just feel like color pops. <laughs> Element of surprise palette has a lot of surprises. So, you know, believing that everything was gonna be okay, that they could be together, that they would be happy. Um, 
that, you know, she and her husband shouldn't be together and that if they got divorced, he would take her dog, which apparently she loved more than anything that she was, they were, you know, this was a big point was that she was really worried about losing custody of her dog if they got divorced and that she didn't want to look bad by being 23 and divorced and having an affair with this young boy. So <clears throat> that's why she wanted to have her husband murdered. And that's pretty much Billy's story. He was, you know, he really was saying that she was um, not in love with her husband anymore, but really didn't see a way out of it. And that, um, you know, she wanted to, she wanted to keep her dog and that they would be, they would have money from her husband's life insurance that they could, you know, build their life on. So he's saying that he believed her in all of this. And I will say these shadows blend out so good. Where's my tracker? Where are you? There we go. Um, and that's what his story was, that he believed her and she said everything was going to be okay, that they were in love and they were going to live their, you know, have their, live their life together. Um, and the, you know, story painted her as this kind of, you know, monster who just loved the rock and roll lifestyle that she really, um, why is it flashing at me? that she really despised her husband for, you know, cutting his hair and trying to move on the straight and narrow, that she um, was money hungry, that she was selfish, you know, all of the, you know, probably typical things you hear when somebody's being tried for murder. Speaking of that, I one time sat on a jury for a murder in San Diego. It was a two week long process. If you guys want to hear that story, let me know in the comments because I will gladly tell it. I'll find some like more details on the case, but I'll gladly tell that story. Um, so that was, that was the story and now she's in jail for life and um, pretty much that's that. Now Pamela's story. Pamela does not deny she was having an affair. She does not deny that she was having problems in her marriage and that it was, you know, a very short marriage, but it was definitely ending. She doesn't deny any of this. Um, she says that she had decided, though, that uh, her relationship with Billy was, you know, wrong. She got swept up and she had ended it about a month before um, Greg was killed. So she was saying that, or her story was that she'd ended the relationship. Billy was um, very upset, a little obsessive, and maybe not that she wanted to have her marriage work, but that she knew she was wrong. And that the reason that Billy killed her husband was because she ended the relationship with Billy. Who do you believe? I don't know. It's up to you. But here are some more interesting facts about this whole case. It's actually interesting about Pam's imprisonment. She has maintained her innocence this entire time, has fought tooth and nail, appealed when she could, saying that she did not do this. She still does not, you know, doesn't deny the affair, but, you know, says, I did not actively plot to kill Greg um, just because our marriage wasn't working out. I would never have wanted him dead, you know. Ow. But while she's been in prison this whole time, I mean, it's been, what, almost 20 years? She went to prison in 91, 2001, 2011. Oh, it's been like almost 30 years. Um, <clears throat> but while she's been in prison, she's done things like gotten two master's degrees. She helps tutor other inmates. Um, essentially, she's a model inmate. But she was at one point transferred to a new prison because of what they said was behavioral issues. So she was in one maximum security prison and then moved to another super max, like not super max, but like more um, a higher maximum security prison that they said was due to behavior issues. Um, there was an article where somebody actually pulled up her records and looked at her issues and they were all, you know, minor things like probably had some ramen she shouldn't have had but it wasn't due to you know starting fights or being violent or anything like that um 
so why was she transferred to this other prison? So here's an interesting story. In 2003, apparently some very risque pictures of her were released to the National Enquirer. Um, and she says that the pictures were released and taken by a guard who had been sexually assaulting her and other inmates and forced them to pose for those photos, which he then turned around and sold to the National Enquirer. So she actually sued the prison for this. And in 2009, a judge awarded her a judgment too smart from the state of New York, where he or the judge approved a 23000 $875 settlement of which Smart would have received $8,750 and her lawyers got the remainder. So I find that to be an interesting development in her story. Um, I don't know if that shines any sort of light on her guilt or innocence in this case. However, I think the fact that ah, every time with this freaking wand I need to learn how to do my mascara this way. So, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, I don't think that that proves anything as far as her guilt or innocence. I do think that it shows maybe what kind of a person she is now that she's in prison. I mean, she's clearly trying to make herself, you know, do better for herself and help her fellow inmates. Um, but, really the only chance she has of getting out of prison is a pardon which she could you know she could be pardoned she served enough time for this that she could be pardoned for it but she does have to admit her guilt and that's basically the thing so now she's you know this whole time been maintaining her innocence but she's been saying that she's been unlawfully prisoned and that prison is pretty terrible which I'm sure it is I mean nobody's hanging out and having fun like they did in you know Orange is the New Black where it looked like kind of fun but you know she's in a high security prison so it's probably pretty terrible there for her um but all she has to do to get pardoned she would have to claim responsibility um so I guess that's that's kind of where she stands as far as what's going to happen to her and that is the tale of the case of Pamela Smart, who is not Elizabeth Smart's mother. <laughs> they're not even related at all. Um, there just happens to be people with Smart in the true crime community. Um, and if you're wondering, I will clean this off. I'm just letting it dry. It's way easier to remove once it's dry. Um, so what did you guys think of the story? I truly knew nothing about it outside of that Nicole Kidman movie, um, in which now knowing about it, I, they, no, they made her look like a crazy, like femme fatale, um, kind of character <laughs> that I really don't think is an accurate portrayal. Um, my opinion is she was probably more involved than she wants to admit in, um, getting these boys to do this whether she directed them directly and said hey do this or um, kind of was playing with fire with that relationship anyway um, I think that is something she does need to take some responsibility for was um, like of course young boys were not going to be thinking correctly um, and you know it does it makes her a sexual predator she was an adult and that kid was a kid think of yourself when you were 16. were you old enough to be making any sort of sexual decisions i know i wasn't she had, even at 23 i shouldn't have been making sexual decisions like that what do you think do you think she was directly involved do you think it was a case of influence do you think i don't know i i it's an interesting case with a lot of twists and turns. I hope you guys liked this video. Um, I really like talking about this stuff with you guys on Tuesdays. Um, if you have any cases you want to see, definitely let me know in the comments and let me know your opinions. I want to know what you guys think. Right, and with that, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and I will love you forever for that. All right, have a super great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, 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 bye.